Hey guys, it's Kira and welcome to another video. Today I'm super excited to be sharing my TBR for Tis the Damn Readathon, which is the Taylor Swift themed readathon taking place throughout the entirety of March. Now I'm definitely a Taylor Swift fan, and I'm not sure if you've noticed from the content on this channel, but I'm also a fan of books. So when you bring those two things together in a readathon, you are in for a treat, or at least that was my experience when I found out that this readathon was taking place. I was so excited, and it's almost March which means it's time to share my TBR and get prepped for taking part in this readathon because it is a big one there are lots of prompts and I'm going to be challenging myself to try and read as much as possible. Now there are lots and lots of hosts for this readathon some of them have booktube channels some of them have bookstagram accounts and so I'll be linking all of the hosts for this readathon in the description box down below so you can go and check them out because honestly they have come up with such a creative and all-encompassing readathon that brings together books and Taylor Swift in such a fun way. So so a big big thank you to all of the creators of this readathon for actually coming up with the idea because it's brilliant and like I said they're all linked down below so I would definitely go and check them out if I was you. So the way that this readathon works is that there are three prompts for each of Taylor Swift's albums. So there are nine albums and three prompts for each of those albums, but you only need to do one prompt from each album in order to collect that album and essentially add it to your collection of what you finished throughout the readathon. So the aim of the game is to kind of collect as many albums as possible. So the way that I've done it is I've just selected one prompt from each of the albums. And then there is also a 10th additional category called blank space, which offers you an opportunity to get an extra like little point as well so of course it's all just a bit of fun trying to read as much as possible but I do love matching books up to prompts and it was so fun to see what prompts they'd come up with for each of the albums so without further ado we have lots of books to talk about so let's jump straight into it so first up we have the original Taylor Swift album and the prompt that I've gone for from this album is self-titled read a memoir so I'm going to be reading Stephen King on writing a memoir of the craft this is a book that I've been meaning to read for a really really long time because I love 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 Stephen King's books and I just think it's going to be so interesting to hear more about his life how he actually came to be the author that he is and everything that goes into all of his works I know he's had some quite like controversial situations about his writing and I think his history with substance misuse and things like that and I just think it's going to be a really really interesting read that will probably provide a lot more context to his works and I'm really excited about it next up we have the fearless album and I'm also going for the fearless prompt which is to read a book that intimidates you. Now this was a really really obvious choice because there's one book I was already intending to read in March that is quite possibly the most intimidating book on my shelves and that is Middle March by George Eliot which is just gigantic and huge and so many characters and basically just brings the word intimidating to life in book format. So if this book isn't intimidating I don't know what is and it seemed like the perfect choice for this readathon. Will I be able to finish it in the month? Potentially not, but I'm going to give it a good go and see how far I get. Next up we have the Speak Now album and the prompt that I've gone for from this one is If This Was a Movie and surprisingly that is a prompt to read a book which also has a movie adaptation. Now I have kind of bent the rules slightly for this one because I've actually gone for a book that was turned into like a Netflix slash TV adaptation but I'm pretty sure as long as it has some kind of screen adaptation it works for this prompt and I'm definitely counting it because the book that I'm planning to read is probably one of the ones that I'm most excited about from this entire TBR and that is The Queen's Gambit by Walter Tevis. I watched The Queen's Gambit over the Christmas and New Year period this year and it was absolutely incredible. I'm a big, big fan of Anya Taylor-Joy. She is so, so wonderful and I've seen her in a couple of things now and I just think she's an incredible actress, but it just made this seem such an interesting concept and this is a book that I would literally have never ever picked up because I have no vested interest in chess whatsoever and yet the way that it was brought to life on screen just gave me an entirely different perspective into this story and has now made me really really interested to actually watch the original um sorry read the original source material and just see what it's all about and compare how different the book and the tv adaptation are and I'm just really excited because I loved the Queen's Gambit tv Netflix adaptation so much and that is the entire reason why I bought this book so I'm really excited to give it a go. 
Next up we have Red and the prompt that I've chosen from this album is Begin Again, read a book that you previously DNF'd. Now I really didn't have many options for this one because I don't often DNF books because I like to see what's going to happen and see whether my opinions will change and it's only really if I'm either really pressed for time, have something I need to read instead or absolutely hate a book that I actually DNF it and the book that I have selected is the Love Square by Laura Jane Williams and this kind of fell into the I needed to read other books category. I was reading this one at the beginning of December and I had quite a few different like readathons and Dark Academics book club things going on in that month because we were reading two Dark Academics books. I also wanted to try and read as many books as possible before the end of the year to up my Goodreads goal and I just wasn't enjoying this book and because it was December and I just kind of felt like I wanted to feel happy and festive and have a fun time, I just kind of put this book to one side in favour of other things. This one is a romance focusing on our main character who is kind of unlucky in love and then as the synopsis suggests she kind of meets three different guys around the same time. I absolutely loved that concept but actually the way that it played out in the part of the book that I had read already was essentially that she didn't really meet them all at the same time. It was like one then another then another and it just kind of felt a little bit less intriguing to me the way that it played out that way. I am definitely going to give this one another try and see whether I enjoy it more this time around. The next album is 1989 and I've also chosen the 1989 prompt which is to read a book with a number in the title. I actually looked at my shelves and realised I have so few books with numbers in the titles that again this left me with not many options but the book that I'm going to be picking up is The First 15 Lives of Harry August by Claire North. Now this one was actually gifted to me by my friend Amy and she said that neither her or her boyfriend really got on with this book. However, the premise does sound really interesting because essentially the main character, Harry August, is a character who seems to like die and then wake up back in his childhood of his life. So he like relives the same life over and over again. So it's kind of like a Groundhog Day concept, but instead of being just one day over and over again, he has the opportunity to live his life again and again and again. I'm not sure if he starts at the same time every single time, like as in if he goes back to let's say like 1987 every time or whether Harry August kind of like grows and evolves with the years or timelines change, I really don't know, but it just sounds really intriguing and I'm definitely excited to give this one a try. So 15 lives equals a number in the title, so this is the one I'm reading for that prompt. Next up we have Reputation and I've gone for the prompt Look What You Made Me Do. Now for this one I'm going to be reading The Viscount Who Loved Me which is by Julia Quinn and this is the second book in the Bridgerton series. Now this one has been highly highly recommended to me by my friend Sarah. We both actually started reading the Bridgerton series at the same time. I actually have a reading vlog up for The Duke and I which was the first book in the series and I really really enjoyed that but I stopped reading after that one because I wanted to kind of like get out of the series and read something different before coming back to reading more of the series but instead of stopping Sarah actually read the entire Bridgerton series which is eight books in one week which is so impressive because that is an excellent week that's more books than I generally read in a month so I was absolutely blown away but she highly recommended Anthony's book as one of her favorites along with Benedict's which is the third one but I can't really get to the third one before I've read the second and in the comments section of my Duke and I reading vlog everyone said that the second book was their favourite so this book has come highly recommended and I'm really excited to continue on with the Bridgerton series. Next up we have Lover and I've also chosen the Lover prompt which is to read a book that is a five star prediction. Now the book that I've chosen for this one is actually a memoir and it's one that has been on my shelf since my birthday last year and I really really am super excited to read it because I think the concept sounds so interesting and I think it's just going to be such an empowering and uplifting but really gritty and interesting story and that is Wild by Cheryl Strayed which is essentially I think the story of this woman going on the like Pacific Crest Trail, which is a huge trail up the west coast of America, I believe. And I've watched so many vlogs of people hiking various trails. I love hearing about people who've hiked the Appalachian Trail, which is one that goes up the east coast. But this one just sounds so interesting. And the premise is a journey from lost to found, which again, sounds like it's going to be such an uplifting and motivating narrative. And I just think it's going to be so, so cool. And then I can maybe watch the movie adaptation with Reese Witherspoon, which will be fun as well. And I guess this one could also be used as a book with a movie adaptation, but I'm going to be reading it for the five star prediction. Now the next album is Folklore, which is an album that I 
love with all of my heart but I actually didn't really connect with the prompt for this album we had the option to read a book that was based on like a mythical retelling but I didn't really have any of them on my shelves and there was also an option to read a book that was written by two authors which again I didn't have and I didn't really want to buy any new books for this readathon however there is also a non-bookish prompt which spoke to my heart so that prompt is cardigan and it is simply to wear a cozy outfit and potentially take a cozy picture and I don't know if you've ever seen any of my videos before but if you have you'll know that I almost always am in a jumper practically live in jumpers and I am always cozy with a cup of tea in hand and a jumper on my body so this one just seems like a prompt that was made for me so for this one I'm not going to be picking up a book but I'm going to be wearing lots and lots of jumpers throughout March because honestly it might be the last month of the year where I can comfortably wear jumpers without getting too hot so I'll definitely make the most of it and get cozy with lots of jumpers and lots of tea. And then the final album is of course Evermore which I still can't quite decide whether I prefer Evermore and Folklore. I'm slightly leaning towards Evermore but honestly it's such a difficult decision but either way we have one more prompt and I've gone for the Nobody No Crime prompt which is one of my favourite songs from the album and that is to read a mystery or thriller. So I'm going to be picking up Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill. I was gifted this book quite recently and it seems really intriguing. I've seen mixed reviews on it, but I'm just gonna read the synopsis because I think it sounds super interesting. It says, when Judas Coyne heard someone was selling a ghost on the internet, there was no question. It was perfect for his collection of the macabre, the cannibal's cookbook, the witch's confession, the authentic snuff movie. As an aging death metal rock god, buying a poltergeist almost qualifies as a business expense. But this ghost delivered to his doorstep in a black heart-shaped box is different. It makes the house feel cold, it makes the dogs bark, and it means to chase Jude from his home and make him run for his life. That sounds thrilling if I ever did hear a good thriller synopsis. So I'm really excited to read this one and just make up my own opinion, see what I think about it, and just get into it because I've never read anything by Joe Hill before either. And then finally, we have the additional blank space option. So I've decided to go for the prompt to read a book that Taylor Swift has referenced because Taylor Swift references so many books in her songs, particularly in the ones in her latter two albums, Folklore and Evermore. There are so many literary references and it's really, really interesting to see how they are woven into the narrative. Some of them much more obviously and others a bit more subtle. And almost as if by magic, a really, really lovely subscriber sent me an email the other day pointing me in the direction of a Jack Edwards video where he basically broke down every single literary reference in Folklore and Evermore, which was so interesting. So I will link that video down below if you want to go and check that out and maybe use that as some inspiration for your choice for this prompt. But I've decided to read Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. I actually don't have a physical copy of Peter Pan yet and I'm actually debating whether I want to get a physical copy or potentially listen to the audiobook, which I think would be a lovely experience. But Peter Pan is a really, really lovely story. It's one that I think most people have seen the Disney version of and then the various different um, like live action ones like Peter Pan and Hook and all of those kinds of things. And it is just such a wonderful story that I think lots of people connected with as a child. So I think I would love to, of course, actually see what the book is like and whether I enjoy it as much as the movie versions. And Peter Pan is of course referenced in Cardigan when she says Peter losing Wendy. So it takes off for that one as well. And completely unrelated, but also kind of related, isn't actually referenced in the song Willow. Um, but I do think that the like invisible string that features in the Willow music video looks like the fairy dust that you can shake out of Tinkerbell. And I just thought that, that was so cute as well. So I'm kind of connecting them as well but I think Peter Pan will be a really really fun read and that is my Taylor Swift Tis the Damn Readathon TBR set in stone so I really really hope that I actually managed to take off quite a lot of these books that is nine books in total I believe because I left out one prompt and went for the cozy option but I really do feel like that is going to be a challenging month but also a really really fun one and I think it's always more fun to read a lot in a readathon month because the motivation of other people doing the same thing just always seems to boost me. But I would love to know if you're taking part in this readathon and which books you're planning to read, if we have any similar or the same picks, and just basically what you're planning to do with your March. I hope you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on the books that I'm planning to pick up in March, and I cannot wait for this readathon to start. Just a reminder that all of the hosts of the readathon will be linked in the description box down below. So thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.